Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 31st of July. Group of ministers review situation as India's COVID-19 tally crosses 1.6 million mark. Afghan president orders release of 500 Taliban prisoners as each ceasefire begins. And Muslims in southern India celebrate Eid with social distancing masks. And now for all the details. India's recovery rate from the deadly coronavirus has improved to 64.54%. Health Minister Dr. Harsh Bharthan said on Friday while chairing a group of ministers meeting to review the overall situation. India's coronavirus cases tally reached nearly 1.64 million on Friday with over 35,800 associated deaths. India's Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan, while chairing a group of ministers meeting held to discuss the overall COVID-19 situation, on Friday said, the recovery rate from the deadly infection across the country has improved to 64.54%. Harshwardhan asserted that now the doubling rate has also increased to 21 days. He informed the Indian government has been focusing on increasing its testing capacity to tackle the outbreak and said that in the 24 hours over 600,000 tests have been conducted. India has so far reported 1,639,350 confirmed coronavirus cases with 35,807 associated deaths. The worst hit states in India are Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu which are currently under lockdown to curb the virus spread until August 31 with some relaxations. दिन प्रतिदिन फैटालिटी रेट कम होता जा रहा है पहले दिन के आंकड़े से अगले दिन का आंकड़ा डेफिनेटली कम होता है आज सुबह वो 2.18% है रिकवरी रेट 64.54% है और लगभग काफी समय से हमारा जो डबलिंग रेट है ये देश में 21 दिन के करीब चल रहा है Meanwhile, as part of India and Israel's combined efforts to develop a new generation set of COVID-19 tests that can reduce timing of the entire testing process, a non-invasive, rapid COVID-19 test study camp was organized at Ram Manohar Lohia Hospital in New Delhi on Friday. A team of top Israeli scientists and health experts has been working with Indian counterparts to develop the rapid tests which officials have said are expected to provide results in 30 seconds. Floods caused by heavy monsoon rains in India's eastern Bihar and northeastern Assam have affected nearly 8 million people and killed more than 110 since May, at a time when coronavirus cases have also swelled in both the states. Floods caused by heavy monsoon rains in India's eastern Bihar and northeastern Assam states have displaced or affected nearly 8 million people and killed more than 110 people since May. Authorities have said at a time when coronavirus cases have swelled there. In Bihar, floods have stranded more than 2.4 million people with around 12,800 staying in government shelters, complicating efforts by officials to enforce social distancing measures to curb the coronavirus spread. Bihar has so far reported more than 41,000 cases of coronavirus infections with 255 deaths. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Brahmaputra River in northeastern Assam is flowing above the danger level in many places. The floods in Assam, where at least nine one-horned rhinos have drowned in the Kaziranga National Park, have so far affected 5.7 million people and killed 107 people. 
Since the start of the monsoon season on June 1st, Assam has received 15% more rainfall than a 50-year average and Bihar 47% more, according to the country's weather department. China has warned that a forced decoupling of its economy with India would hurt both countries. This came after New Delhi's recent moves to ban Chinese mobile apps and sideline business interests as the border remains tense a month after 20 Indian soldiers were killed in clashes with Chinese troops. Chinese ambassador to India Su Vidong warned on Thursday that a forced decoupling of China's economy with India following a Himalayan border clash last month that killed 20 Indian soldiers would hurt both countries. Speaking during a webinar, the Chinese ambassador said China was not a strategic threat to India and that the general structure that we can't live without each other remains unchanged. The statement came after New Delhi's recent moves to ban Chinese mobile apps and sideline business interests in one of the world's biggest markets, even as the border remains tense with many more troops on the ground than usual. The forced decoupling of the Chinese and Indian economies is against the trend and will only lead to a lose-lose outcome. Meanwhile, India's foreign ministry said on Thursday that a troops disengagement process as agreed by the two sides had yet to be completed and that another round of commander-level talks would be held soon. Indian officials say Chinese troops have intruded on its side in the remote western region, while China says it has not breached the disputed border and has asked India to restrain its frontline troops. We expect that the Chinese side will sincerely work with us for complete disengagement and de-escalation and full restoration of peace and tranquility in the border areas at the earliest. Officials of the nuclear-armed neighbours have been talking regularly to de-escalate the border standoff after the June 15 clash in the Galwan Valley of India's Ladakh region, when the Indian officials said soldiers were beaten to death with rocks and clubs. Moving on. A massive protest was held recently in Pakistan's Sindh province against enforced disappearances of political activists by Pakistani spy agencies and the army. The demonstrators demanded the immediate release of those abducted by security agencies. A massive protest was held recently in Kazi Ahmad town of Pakistan's Sindh province as people defy state terrorism amid the rise in enforced disappearances incidents of political activists by the country's spy agencies, including the ISI and the army. The protesters holding posters of missing Sindhi political activists participated in March as they demanded the immediate release of those abducted by security agencies. Organized by the Sindh National Voice, the protest included a large number of women and children whose family members have been missing for months and years. Human rights activists have long accused that Pakistan Army uses torture, enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and political repression as tools to silence voice and struggle of Sindhis. Activists have also been highlighting the plight of minorities worldwide for the past several years to seek help from the international community and human rights organizations. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, while addressing the nation on the occasion of Eid on Friday, announced the release of 500 Taliban prisoners as part of the U.S.-Taliban agreement signed earlier this year. This comes at a time when the Taliban has announced a three-day ceasefire in Afghanistan during the Eid festival. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, while addressing the nation on the occasion of Eid, ordered the release of 500 Taliban prisoners in response to the group's three-day ceasefire announcement. Ghani, while hoping for the extension of the truce on Friday, said the 500 prisoners are not part of the list given to Afghan government by the Taliban and that these inmates will be released within the next four days. 
the president said he does not have the right to decide on the release of those 400 Taliban prisoners who are accused of serious crimes. Therefore, a grand assembly of Afghan elders will be called to decide on the release of the 400 Taliban prisoners. According to Ghani, the Afghan government has so far released 4,600 Taliban prisoners. This comes as the Taliban also completed the release of the 1,000 prisoners called for in the peace agreement signed with the U.S. in Doha earlier this year. A 16-year-old girl in Afghanistan is looking to ride her own path and inspire other women as a motocross athlete. She hopes to inspire others to pursue the tough spot in the country where the outcome of peace efforts with the Taliban could lead to restrictions on women participating in athletics. Making jumps over dirt mounds in her tracksuit and padded helmet, 16-year-old Nagin Afshar could be any motocross enthusiast in the world. But she is riding in Afghanistan, where the outcome of peace efforts with the Taliban could lead to the hardline group putting in restrictions on women participating in sports and an end to her passion. Afshar was born in Afghan capital Kabul after the collapse of Taliban era and she joined the Motorcycle Federation of Afghanistan nearly a year ago to do motocross, an emerging new sport in the country. She said she hopes to inspire women of her generation to take alternate paths and show the world another facade of Afghanistan. ما هدفم این شد که بتوانم برای خانومای افغانم یک الگو شوم که اونا میتونن این ورزش ورزش سخت و که خانوم دیش نیست پیش پیش برده بتونن ما کوشش کردیم که اولین خانومای باشیم که دیگه قدم دیگه راه قدم گذاشتن و انشالله بتونیم دیگه را هم تشویق کنیم. The Taliban ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001 after seizing power following years of civil war. and imposed many restrictions on women, including preventing them from doing any types of sports. Observers said that after the signing of U.S.-Taliban agreement in February, the inter-Afghan peace talks could result in the hardline group taking on a formal role in government and their possible return to power. Muslims in India's southern Kerala state celebrated the festival of Eid al-Adha on Friday with social distancing and masks amid coronavirus concerns. Mosques out of containment zones in the state allowed limited entry of few worshippers for prayers. Muslims in India's southern Kerala state celebrated the festival of Eid al-Adha on Friday after the festival moon was sighted in Middle East countries amid concerns for coronavirus. While most of the mosques in the state disallowed prayers owing to the rising virus cases, some out-of-containment zones allowed limited entry of few worshippers for prayers. Mass prayers and gatherings were not observed anywhere in the state. Government in day, Adebola, Arogi, Opinde, Nerdeshangal, Padichund, Matramana, Namalin, Ibada, Beliberinalande, Niskaro, Hutubaim, Ella, Nerva Hitcha. Eid al Adha, also known as the Festival of Sacrifice, begins when the new crescent moon is sighted in Saudi Arabia. marking celebrations for Muslims around the world. However, some Muslims prefer to celebrate the festival as per the moon sighting in their homeland. Meanwhile, residents in neighboring Pakistan's Karachi city were seen taking their sacrificial cattle for a clean wash just ahead of the festival to be celebrated on Saturday in the country. During one of the two most important festivals of the Islamic calendar, Muslims around the world traditionally purchase livestock and after slaughtering, the meat is distributed among family, friends and poorer members of the community. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Group of ministers review situation as India's COVID-19 tally crosses 1.6 million mark. Afghan president orders release of 500 Taliban prisoners as each ceasefire begins. Muslims in southern India celebrate Eid with social distancing masks. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/SouthAsianewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at SBJ News Live. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.